Medium ISP, seven segment flip top display by Atticus Tip Lady. The purpose of this project is, is to design and create a seven segment flip top display using no external LEDs. The circuit works by generating a magnetic field by wrapping copper uh, wire around various bolts that I can manually alter through code causing each segment to flip. Flip dots are tools used in old school displays created as a method of substituting LED displays with hardware, requiring very little voltage to operate for prolonged periods of time. Flip dots operate by acting as an electromagnet display that uses small magnetic disks to show image and text. This means that the flip dot itself is constructed using two sides, one black and one visible color, such as yellow or white, and operates by attracting and repelling the magnetic sides, causing the build to flip. The bolts acting in the circuit functions as that as of an electromagnet. An electromagnet in a flip dot display is the part of the circuit that makes the dot physically flip by, as stated previously, generating a magnetic field once the current is applied to one of the copper wire terminals. Once the current has been successfully removed after a brief flash, the magnetic field disappears when the current is switched off. The copper wire turns in this case are often wound around a magnetic core made uh, from a ferromagnet such as the iron bolts used in said project as the magnetic core in the bolt concentrates the magnetic flux resulting in a more powerful magnet. A law that helps describe why this occurs is Orsted's law, which states that when an electrical current flows through wire, a magnetic field around it is created. Following Orsted's discovery about electromagnetism, James Clerk Maxwell was able to derive an equation that related the magnetic field strength with the current flowing through said wire. However, this equation can be simplified greatly for a long solenoid, a coil wound many times per unit of length, such as the one in this project. B being the magnetic field vector, mu stand for the permeability of free space, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7, and I being the total current closed by the loop. Once the current has left the magnetic field, the seven segment flip dot is able to hold each segment in place and not cause it to fall if placed upside down due to something called remanence, also referred to as residual magnetism, which is the magnetization that is left behind in a ferromagnet, such as the iron bolt, after a magnetic field is removed, the current through the copper wire. Ohm's law and Ampere's law, the one stated previously, are connected in the context of this project due to the combined dependency of the current in the circuit. Ampere's law describes how the magnetic field around the conductor bolt is directly proportional to the current that is flowing through it. The amount of current that flows through the coil depends on Ohm's law, which relates current voltage and resistance. This means that if the resistance of the coil is high, less current will flow for the given voltage, resulting in a weaker magnetic field that is being produced from the coil. As a result of such, the dot may not flip properly. The opposite happens where if the resistance through the coil is low, more current flows, resulting in a stronger magnetic field that flips the dot. MOSFETs found within the circuit are key as is they are what allow the user to control the direction of the current from the 12 volt input through the use of a 5 volt output from something like a Nano or AT Mega 328. On a MOSFET's design, there are four specific terminals with three set pins, those being the source, S, gate, G, drain, D, and body, B. The body is typically connected to the source terminal so that the MOSFET functions as a field effect transistor. P-channel MOSFETs are useful for high-side switching, where the transistor is placed between the power supply and the load, while the N-channel devices are typically used for low-side switching placed between the load and the ground. Overall, this means that the N-channel turns on when the voltage on the gate pin, G, is higher than the source, S, by a specific degree, meaning that if the source is at 0 volts and the gate is at 5 volts, the chip turns on, connecting the drain pin, D, to the source. The inverse occurs with the P-channel chips, where if the gate pin is lower than the source, current is able to flow. Flyback diodes are used with MOSFETs to protect them from voltage spikes that occur when switching inductive loads like motors, solenoids, or coils. When a MOSFET turns off, the inductor resists the sudden change in current and generates a high voltage spike in an attempt to keep the current flowing. This spike can damage the MOSFET or create unwanted electrical noise. To prevent this, a flyback diode is placed across the inductive load with its cathode connected to the positive supply. The diagram to the right depicts the H-bridge circuit that utilizes two P-channel MOSFETs, two N-channel MOSFETs, a load, that being the bolts, and four diodes. This circuit is called an H-bridge due to the layer of the chips resembling that of the letter H, simply enough. 
to drive current through the bolt in one direction, the left P-channel and the right N-channel MOSFETs are turned on, allowing for current to flow from the 12-volt supply through the motor and down to the ground. To reverse the bolt's direction, the right P-channel and the left N-channel are turned on instead. The code for this project is also quite simple enough, as it just switches the current between each input of the MOSFET during the proper time. A PCB was also created for this project, and due to some of the bridges leaking voltages, the circuit shorts when plugging in. However, a second version is in the works and should be ordered soon enough. All of the 3D design parts were created on Fusion 360 and made so that each are removable in one way, allowing for easy reconstruction and deconstruction. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my project on the 7-segment flip-dot display.